Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It, it's Russ here from Porky's Corner, the biggest gob in sport. Today, we're joined by Jerry from uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, how are you doing, Jerry? All right, mate. Unmute you, send, mate. Wait a minute, I'll send you a message. Uh, you all right, Jerry? Hey? Yeah, yeah I'm all right, mate. I, don't, I didn't know if I could eat. hardly hear you then. It must be a bad signal. What have you been up to? Uh, not much. You know, Christmas and all that stuff. Can um, you speak closer to your microphone, Jerry, please? No problem. Good man. You don't have to be shy and whisper, you know. We don't we're not we're not gonna mug you or attack you. <laughs> That's all right. Can you hear me you okay? Are... Yeah. Yeah, can it you... you're not very loud, Jerry. It's a bit quiet. Can you come closer to Mike a bit? Yeah, that's it, yeah. That's better. We just wanted to see your muzzy, really, Jerry. <laughs> that's, so... that's some muzzy that you make. You make Magnum look t tame. <laughs> and Graham Souness. Tom Selleck's got nothing on me, man. He's got no on you, Jerry. How have you been? Have you had a good Christmas, Jerry? I'm sorry. It was a bit, a bit quiet. Yeah. Well, I just want to wish you and your family Happy New Year for 2024. How's that? Oh, thanks very much, Russ. Russ, I appreciate that. Good. Uh, a lot's gone on in the sport of boxing since we last spoke. You may, How many times have you been on there? A couple or one? This is my second time. Second time. You, you see, not many get to second uh, stage, you know. <laughs> second level. Second level, <laughs> right. Uh, a lot's gone on, so we'll, we'll go balls deep. Uh, Joshua and Garno, what's your take on it, Jerry? Um, so it's a bit of a cop out given that you know Eddie Hills was um, digging fury out for accepting that fight <clears throat> and you know yourself like as boxing fans that's not what we wanted to see right but the fact that it's happened and then Ghana has got well a bit of a shock result uh, we've, we've ended up now in this situation where He's a uh, he's been looked at as like I don't know easy pickings possibly, uh, but also because of the the hype around it and basically that sort of shock, uh, result with Fury, I think people are looking at him like some kind of some kind of uh, easy target maybe, and I I think even though I don't really care much for the fight I think, um. Joshua probably thinks if he can do Ngannou in and make him look, you know, pedestrian or like Fury should have done, I think it'll put him kind of on top, you know, regarding like a comparison to Fury. Um, so that's what I think their motivation is, even though he could write, you know, he could end up getting embarrassed as well. But the likelihood is. They've picked that fight to kind of go, well, we'll do one better than Fury. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I mean, you think... that's what you say, like, but I mean, you know, that's what I think they're doing. Like, Do you think that, uh, you think that Joshua is happy that Wilder got beat, Jerry? I'm conflicted about this. He probably is, right? And I'd be happy as well, because, you know, I don't, particularly um I've never been a Wilder fan, right? But did they not have did the fight not nearly um get made where Wilder turned down like I don't know millions originally to fight Joshua? Because I know like it looks like AJ then has been avoiding this fight with Wilder. But if I'm if I can remember rightly, um, Wilder's management talked him out of the fight originally, so it's like who's ducking who here? But you know, yeah, AJ's probably thinking I don't need to dispose of him now, or I don't need to get in, you know engage with him now in a fight because 
Um, sure. He's already been sort of exposed by Parker. So he probably is. Yeah, he probably is. Probably thinking, I don't need to, de- de- don't need to deal with this now, you know? Do you think that Eddie and Joshua are stringing along the Saudis because it now looks like they're going to put Joshua and Ungarno as headline act in March and Wilder and Zhang on undercard. So that'll be two shows that we've had Joshua and on, on one show and Wilder on it as well. And they've still not fought each other. So do you think there's, there's, they're either trying to build it up to get Wilder at mix or they're just stringing everybody along? I mean, how much longer is this going to be now? Because they were talking about this 10 years ago and if they fight in March, and uh, it could be like another year, couldn't it? Or after that, couldn't it now? From from a fan's perspective, everybody wants to have seen the fight. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they're... Um, Is it dead now, that fight, do you think, Jerry? Say it again, Ross. Is the fight dead? Wilder and oh, John- yeah. Just, oh, yeah, I was just about to say, I don't think that fight's ever going to happen. Yeah. That that is what I was gonna say. Yeah, I I agree, mate. It's it's not it's not. I mean, they should have made it at Christmas time. But yeah, they should have made that fight at Christmas time. When they had them in the same arena. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe the plan was, um, you know. Wilder was meant to win. Maybe that's what the plan was, but personally, I am not surprised uh, that Parker beat him. Uh, I think any boxer is able to beat him as long as you yeah. just stay away from the man, you know? So I don't know if they were they knew that that was a calculated risk that, look, Parker's probably going to be able to avoid him and get the win. And then that means you won't have to fight him because... Um, you know, essentially somebody has um, dropped him down a level. So why would you want to fight the loser of that fight? You know, may- maybe it was a ploy all along, you know, to kind of get Wilder out of the way because he's devalued now. But if he had a cleaned out Parker, of course, everybody would be like, right, well, Wilder's got to fight. Wilder's got to fight um, Joshua now, you know? Yeah. But I think it is dead. I don't see why or how they make it now, like, you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one, isn't it, really? Because Joshua's been built up as this, like, killer, hasn't he? But he, he, he isn't, is he, really? No, I mean, I'm not a huge fan, right? But I'm also not. He, he has a lot of detractors, does Joshua. And I mean... He's got talent and whatnot, but you know, when you compare him to like some of the people we really admire from the past, like you know, like I'm a big Larry Holmes fan, like, um, and you're a big Muhammad Ali fan, yeah. um, you know, he's not on the same level, like you know, he and is he a killer? Well, I mean, you can't be a killer if your your mental state is that fragile. Do you not think so? Well. I look at it like this. I always revert back to this. Who's his free best wins? Yeah, well, um, you know, I actually thought Klitschko would give a good um, show one of himself in that fight. I actually think that Klitschko in that fight would have done better against uh, Fury. But anyway, you have to say it's Klitschko, but the argument there is, you know, he's at the end of the career. Um I suppose you got to say, didn't he take the belt off Parker? I can't remember now. No, oh, no, Joshua, yeah, but that was Fury's belt, won it, and Parker got it by default, really, didn't he? So, I'm going to throw Parker in there as one of his best wins, simply on that basis. What, because he um, beat... Just because, well, he was a champion, so, you know... Yeah, but how did he get that championship belt? Well, that I mean, that's true. Like, I mean, and it was only he got an old time decision against Andy Ruiz for a belt that they took off Fury 
by default, didn't they? Basically, that's what happened, didn't it? So, um, really, Anthony Joshua should be classed as a paper champion. What do you think about all that? All you Anthony Joshua uh, lovers, you know, who, who email me every single day, you know, 18, 19 times, you know, with your vileness, he's shite. He can't fight for toffee. He's a pumped-up weightlifter, pop, pop, bang. <laughs> uh, I've got a question. Well, let's, talk, let's forget talking English. Let's talk turkey. He can't fight for Toffee. He's a big stiff and he's insecure. Let's have it right. There's been rumours right. going around for years. Therapeutic exemption certificates. They've been building them up as the Muhammad Ali. It's like the, the tele, the Eddie Earn and Joshua. It's like a game of show and tell. They're telling us everything, but they're showing us nothing. They're calling out Wilder, but they're fucking fighting Franklin, Hilarious and Wally. Yeah. This is what this is what we're up against, and now they're still calling out Wilder, but they're signed to fight a guy who's had one boxing fight, Engano. That's where we're fucking at. Uh, I mean, I agree. Um, but I mean, who whose resume? I know he's full of like old men and stuff, like and you know, like people that should never have had belts in the first place. But who whose resume is better, other than uh, excluding Usyk? Out of the the heavyweights of his generation, they're all shite. Really. Oh, what a shit. Like, Fury's is shite too. This is how I look at it, right? Carl Frotch has beat more world champions than Joshua and Fury put together. Exactly. I, I was referring to heavyweights, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Oh, in heavy oh yeah, well, in heavyweights, Lennox Lewis has beat more than both of them put no, together. I, I mean, Currently, you know, currently, whose CV is the is the best one out of the current heavyweights? Of course, oh, there's loads man. of guys. You are. There's, of course, there's. <laughs> goes without saying, there's two, tons of guys in the past. You know, their CVs are pathetic. They're pathetic compared to, you know, anyone you name, Lewis. Yeah. You know, like Tyson, fucking, you name it. You know what I mean? Um. Like you said, frauds as well. Yeah, we we should. It doesn't even pales in comparison. So you can't. They're they're the CVs of the the modern heavyweights at the minute are shite. They're not. I mean, they're not going on long runs, are they? And they're picking and choosing now. I don't know if it's a society problem, or if it's just a mineral problem. You know where they've got really tiny testicles. You know, like p p process p size. That says. Yeah, really tiny. Do you know, like in that film with Vinnie Jones, when he says, when he pulls Desert Eagle out and they've got like a replica gun, and he says, Your balls are shriveled up into like the size of peas <laughs> and that. Well, that's what I think of heavyweight division when I look at all of them. They're well, all going to do I wonders. Think, and you are. I, th I think you're right, though, um, to say that they don't have the knackers, right? But I do think it's a society thing, too. I think people like don't value the sport enough and they're, you know, they're thinking, Oh, I don't really want to have, I don't really want to fight all these top guys when I could just go to skip going from A to B and go to A to G and make a load of money fighting this guy. Yeah. I think, I think there's a general, but you know, you have to ask yourself, is that because they're, they're health conscious, you know, they're aware that, the fighters of the past didn't think about their health. You know what I mean? And they didn't like, you know, Joe Fraser fought with one eye for fuck's sake. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, he did. Yeah, for years, didn't he, Joe Fraser? From from Olympics, didn't he? Yeah, didn't tell anyone about it because he's obviously tough as they come. Like. Yeah. But so, you know what I mean? I think there's a, there's a, they're, they're weighing up their health possibly. They don't have knackers, and it's a societal thing, you know. I think as well, they know they can get away with it. There's been a lot of shit that they've got away with, so they think, well, we can sell another piece of shit down the river here, and people will buy it. Well, I think. Oh, well, this is how I look at it, right? Do you see Fury beating Usyk, or do you see him even fighting Jerry? No, you first asked me. 
that whenever I first was on, and I said I didn't see it because I couldn't see Fury. Is he really going to be in shape? I mean, he's just had Christmas. We all know he likes to, you know, indulge. Hmm. Otherwise, how is he in that shape? Um, so I actually cannot believe that it's not been cancelled yet. Uh, it might well be cancelled, but I mean, you know yourself, so far it seems like it's on. I, I'm still, I still can see it being put back a month, maybe. Um, can you? Yeah. What do you think? I can see it going back to the really, really wire at the end and closing the show on the re ed show. That's where I see it going. I see him closing the show with it. We've. Uh, Anthony Joshua against Sangano and Wilder Zang. I see him closing out March with that show. What do you think? Oh, sorry, sorry. And Fury. I see Joshua fighting Sangano. Fury Usek closing out March. Maybe on the same show even. And Wilder Zang. One big That's send off. Pardon? That's what I thought you were talking about there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually on. Yeah, I can see it all happening on one night. I don't see a Feb then March. And I think people can just keep flopping out for pay-per-views every month for that shower of shit. I don't see it. I don't see it. And I don't see Fury looking keen to take these on me. I don't I don't see it in him. I don't see any going Fury. Fury just looks to me like he's at the he's on a club eighteen to thirty. Uh yeah, I mean I don't. I think. I think he's. You know, he's rich. Uh, I think he um, came. His comeback is basically being a bit of a very strategically arranged run. You know, fought the same guy three times. Fair enough. You know, a couple of hard fights with those guys, but you know, he, he's he's not come back and fought the entire top ten. He's not cleaned out the division, but he's he's ended up a millionaire. Um and you know, he probably can't be arsed anymore, right? I don't think he loves it anymore, you know. I don't know if he ever did, but let's say he did in the past. I don't think he loves it. So, you know, his motivation probably is in you know, in the gutter, like really. And I mean, you've got someone like Usyk, who yeah, I mean it goes without saying, um, Usyk wants Legacy, like you don't think so? Yeah, who six after legacy? He's training like a Trojan. All this is about John Fury running around saying, Oh, Tyson's lost it and his team's shit in that look. That's just end game. Do they think that's going to bother somebody like Usyk? No, he, Usyk doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he thinks they're hilarious. Yeah, he does, you know, doesn't he? Usyk thinks the clowns, doesn't he? he? Yeah, he does. He, Did you he see Usyk, you know, Jerry, outside at ring in, in the Fury's last fight when they called him up on to ring apron and they got him nose to nose? Did he look like he yeah. was bothered about the big GK? Yeah. He didn't. He won't bother um, worry Usyk. No. Um, it annoys me though that uh, pay the guy respect, like, but that's not Fury's way, is it? No. No, but when you've got you what, mate? The man deserves respect. When you've got somebody like Usyk, right, European gold, world gold, Olympic gold, uh, 350 fights, 335 wins, 15 losses, 11 rematched, other four won't go near him, and one of them were uh, Sean Porter at middleweight. Uh, when you've got all that, and then undisputed at cruiserweight, and he's unified at heavyweight, five of the six belts. Do they think that Usa can't see in every style or in every one-liner or head game? He's seen it all. This is somebody who runs up mountains, snowy mountains, bare feet, 10-year-old, 30 of them as amateurs. And they're jumping Rocky in fish ponds because they can't afford ice baths. Do they look like they're bothered about this shower of shit? No, they they think they're jokes. Like they, you know, part partly as well because of the, the cultural difference. You know where they're from and stuff. 
Yeah. They probably think they probably think the Furies are lunatics, like. Yeah. Well, I think all sex are gentlemen. I saw some some uh, article about where they were doing interviews. Um, he, he is proper old school. This woman got up to leave dinner table or front media. And Usyk's team were only ones that stood up. They were only ones that stood up. And none of Americans or English who were at this negotiating table stood up. And there was only one woman in in the in at the at the meeting noticed it. Nobody else noticed it. So he's obviously being fetched up correctly by his parents. And if you look through history, he's had a very similar upbringing to Vladimir and Vitaly because they're very much like that. And Lomachenko. So I wonder if it's uh, a a Ukrainian thing or you know manners and stuff. I'm I, I don't know. So you you again put me to the post there, taking words out of my mouth. That's that is a, a forgotten art of fucking good manners. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, uh, it's a lost thing. Doesn't surprise me in the slightest that Usyk's like that. You said that as well. I actually wanted to ask you about that as well. You know, um. You think the heavyweight champion should be a good role model, same way yeah, I think. I do, Julian yeah. Thinks that. Um, no, I'm not obviously not from a I don't know Julian or anything, I'm just from from videos. I get that, you know. Um, and that's the way I think the, the role model, you know, this the example for everybody, you know, the superb sportsman, you know, that's the way you want your champions to be. Um, and I always thought that the Klitschko's were super. Plus act, yeah, yeah. Do a lot of charity and don't fucking sing about it. You know, don't need yeah. to tell people that they're, you know, putting money X, Y, and Z in different charities, whatever. You know, they, they just do it. You don't hear Vladimir or Vitaly in press conferences come out with f this and sexual that and Corey this and I'm going to knock you out that and this and that and blah de blah they're always shirt and tie on very respectful and they behave like champions don't they really yeah and um, that that old fashioned maybe boring maybe I respect that that's all right I, I think the closest we can get to anybody behaving like a champion going back in every ways you'd say two clutch goes you say Lennox yeah. Lewis, uh, yeah. Michael Mora, I thought he was very respectful. There ain't that many, is there, that you could say behaved like champions. Ali. Um, Larry Holmes was all right. He just was always a bit bitter because he didn't get, he, I don't think he felt he got the credit because he was in yeah. Ali's shadow. Um, Ken Norton, nice guy. Um, yeah. I know, I know what you're getting at. Like, um, what was it? What about uh, was Holyfield? What was Holyfield like? Was he Holyfield? A cha- I always thought Holyfield be able like a champion. He wasn't really good at backing horses and casinos and that, but he be able like man. a champion. I don't think ABI. He couldn't say ABI did. Could you really? No. <laughs> no, Herbie Hyde was a madman. A madman. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's got to be understatement a year. I think Herbie Hyde. Uh, I what thought you were going to say, what are you talking about? Hey? I thought you were going to say, what are you talking about? I always thought Herbie Hyde was a complete madman. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, exactly, yeah. He ended up in Nick, didn't he, Herbie Hyde? Jeez, I didn't actually know that, did he? Yeah, he ended up I... in, uh, he ended up in Blunderston. Uh, HMP Blunderston, Herbie Hyde. Uh, it's a true story, mate. He got stitched up, didn't he, with that news that world sting with cocaine, didn't he? Don't you remember it? Uh, it's sort of vaguely in the back of my memory now, just from the papers and stuff. Yeah, he only um, got a little, he got a tool stretch, didn't he? He got tagging after eight months. He didn't try and come back after that or anything, did he? I'm not sure, you know. He was a cruiserweight, though, wasn't he? After heavyweight, I, I actually thought his um, I, I like his, his movement, like, but I mean. You know, just go and watch him against Vitaly. Like, you know, he couldn't. He didn't have the um the punch resistance, like, or the power to to beat anyone big like that. But I I always saw um his movement impressed me. He kind of reminded me of the old sort of fighters, you know, up on their toes. Yeah, which I like. Yeah. Uh, what 
What's Herbie Ides claim to fame apart from being a two time heavyweight champion? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, shall I? He's the only boxer from Matchroom to win a world title from debut that wasn't from Robert McCracken's conveyor belt. Did you know that? No, I did not. Yeah, and it won Eddie. It was Barry Hearn that got him the WBO, yeah. And he's not even English. He's from Nigeria. Not that that's got anything yeah. to do with it, but that's their only boxer that they've had from debut to win a world title who wasn't from the EIS. If anybody knows any different and can point one out to me, point it out! Pop, pop, bang. Right, Technically, next question. Oh, sorry, go on. Oh, go ahead, no, go ahead. Well, go on, if you want to finish off with Herbie, I've got plenty of time. I was just going to say, um, and that wasn't even Eddie's, that was his dad's. Yeah, and they didn't even count the WBO in 1995 because when Riddick Moe took it off him, he got rid of it straight away like he did the WBC back in the day. Riddick Moe's got rid of more belts than Burton's, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Transgender That's boxing. Funny. What do you think? About that? Transgender boxing, Americans are saying that they're going to let men turn into women and fight women. Okay, there's multiple levels that that bothers me. Yeah. First of all, you've got to say, actually, I don't know, it, safety is the first thing, I think. And then it's just, it's madness, Russ. You know it's madness. What if a woman beats a man, though? What would that do to the sport if they let it carry on? That'll never happen. And well, if it did you know, happen and a woman did beat a man, would they say, "Well, women can beat men"? Would they just would it just be a free for all? Has that happened? I don't know, but if it did happen, the same men can fight women. Well, if they're going to carry on and let that happen in America, these these men turning into women and then fighting women, what if one of these transgender women beat a normal woman? Would that mean that? Uh, sorry, what if a normal woman? Be a transgender woman that had been a man. Am I confused? Are you Rocky? Are you confused, Rocky? Because I am. Look, if one <laughs> of these freaks, right, lost against yeah. a woman, what would that do to the sport? That's that's bad. I put that right there, didn't I? Hmm. Confusing, oh. isn't it, Jerry? Talking about this shit, do you think? Well, I mean, I fundamentally <clears throat> disagree with it, right? Yeah. So I'm just making that clear. Sorry if that annoys anyone. Uh, I don't think any of those type of people watch your channel, though. But anyway, um, I don't agree with it, right? It's madness. I think it's, it's fucking madness, right? Um, if a normal woman beat a man who is transformed into a woman, so it isn't really a woman, but it's pretend that they're a woman, um, and they get beat, then A, it means they're shite. I don't think it turns the sport um, upside down, though. I, I see what you're saying, but I, I just think it's like, good, the actual woman got one for the women because men shouldn't be fighting women, whether they're tran transformed or trans, whatever. Uh, do you know what I mean? And I'm not being like, People can live whatever way they want, right? But that's just silly, like, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree, mate, I agree. It's, it shouldn't be happening, should it, really? But that's how it's going, isn't it, at the moment, pal? Uh, well, I mean, I had a look online just before um, we spoke, just to, like, I haven't actually heard of any, I've heard of weightlifting and a few different sports where these guys have come in I'm a woman, and then blitzed, you know, all the the um, the competitors. <clears throat> and I haven't actually heard of any boxing that's happened that's like, or scheduled to take place where that's actually a thing. Yeah. But the, the article I literally briefly just read before we um we started chatting said that they're so, somewhere in the States is considering allowing that to happen. Yeah. And I, it's, it's, it's lunacy, mate. Lunacy. Raving lunacy. It's like that Dave Courtney book, Raving Lunacy, that I read in Moreland's prison many years ago. Uh, 
Okay. Ben versus Dobson. It sounds like some bloke who uh, was like a, a, a milkman, you know, in uh, Kettering, isn't it? Pete, uh, what's he called? Peter Dobson, is it? Or whatever it's called. Some at Dobson. <laughs> Uh, What's I going on? Think, it? Think, on. think of um, Anita Dobson. Who the fuck was Anita Dobson again? Uh, it was uh, Den Watson's bird in EastEnders, wasn't it? That? That's right. Brian May's wife. Brian May's wife. Yeah, yeah. You, he'll be a big hero of yours, him, won't he? I think he's, you know, he's a good good guitar player. He also comes yeah. across like a nice fellow. Like, you know, not yeah, a massive a queen. Player, didn't he like you used to, Jerry, didn't he? Say that again? He's, he had a bubble perm like you back in the day, didn't he, Brian May? <laughs> Did you have a perm, Jerry, back in the day? I've never had a perm, mate. My hair is curly naturally, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, Trying no. to keep it fucking flat is uh, is the main problem I have. What did your mum give I'm you? Mouth like to crust, Jerry. Make your hair curl. You said that. You said that in a video. Um, a couple of videos back about Lee Wood, and I wet myself laughing, mate, because that's what I was told. If you eat your crusts, your hair will go curly. <laughs> Is that how you ended up with curly hair, Jerry? Jerry. Uh, well, I don't know. I'll need to ask my mum. Well, I think my dad had curly hair as well. They've all got curly hair, like, but I can just say, you know, maybe I'll get a bread sponsorship that I ate my crusts. <laughs> I'll just say that, Russ, right? Yeah. Okay, anyway, then. What the hell uh, and what? Oh, um, well, we, we're still ta- chatting about the transgender shit, weren't we? Yeah, go on, yeah. Go what, what, on, well, finish off on this transgender stuff. What do you think about it all, really, deep down? I think it's dangerous. I think it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be allowed to, um, to take place. I don't think that's right. Yeah, I uh, don't. Largely on a... It, it's crazy, right? The concept's crazy, but, you know, someone will get fucking hurt. <clears throat> and it's yeah. more likely going to be uh, in the women's division. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not good, is it, Jerry? No, no. Right, uh, we've got these liquors at the moment in boxing, right? I mean, there's loads of them. They're everywhere, aren't they? Coogan Cassius, Simon Jordan... Bellew, Sam Jones, Ben Davidson, Juggiers Oliver, The Gad. They're like a little cult of human monitor lizards. All got their tongues firmly planted up. Fury's arsehole, Joshua's, Eddie Hills and Brick Tops. They all want to be in the mix and they all know that they ain't got to upset them two promoters and them two big heavyweights. Do you think the licking is out of control and that they've now become like PR people for these two boxers and two promoters, what do you think? Um, Got four minutes, Jerry. What do you think, pal? Basically, basically uh, you're you're buying on. Um, it's got to the point now where uh, it's been accepted for so long that this is the norm and this is the way. This is the game now. This is how they these guys operate. So everyone has to play the game, or they're not gonna, you know, get on. So, you know, um, basically it's turned into a lick fest or a lick feast. Yeah, a lick And uh, it's sickening because it's like, if any of you guys got... Lickers! You know, sorry, sorry, mate. Yeah. Sorry, I'll just walk <laughs> there for a minute. So they've no backbones and, you know, they're, they're all doing that to ensure that they're financially uh, in a position, sorry, in a position to... You know, obtain um, their job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's pure shite, basically. It's fake. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 getting out of control now. It's got to a stage now where they're killing sport because they're giving these people the platforms to just go and do what they want, fight who they want, say who they want, and and behave how they want. And people are buying into it because of these big platforms, and nobody's saying a word. I mean, who in the right mind wants to see a man who's already, who's only had one boxing fight and he lost it? Who wants to see him 
in a big pay-per-view fight against an Olympic champion and two-time unified champion, who they say is second best heavyweight or third best heavyweight in the world, against a man that's only done 30 minutes as a boxer. I mean, how have we got to this? And how, how is it even being signed off as a fight? Eddie Hills, we're going on about. Fury and Garner shouldn't even be signed off as a boxing fight, but yet he's willing a few months later to put Big Meech in we on Garno and go back on his word. Is he doing that for money? Is he not bothered about what people think about him? Or has he just got such a brass neck on him and such a low opinion of everybody around him that he don't care and he wants to just stand up in his penthouse, get his tiny little prick out and hose us all down with his gold piss? Is that what is that what we're up against now? He he doesn't give a shit. Um, it's been passed off so long that people, you know, younger people, this this is definitely a societal societal thing, right? Um, this is what people are used to now. This is what people people are like, oh, that Nganu guy, he's like undefeated in MMA. People without knowing any better just buy all this shit up. So it's the norm now. That's that people aren't even questioning it, you know. What bullshit? We just chat bullshit like Eddie Hills non stop. And eventually, if you throw enough bullshit at, at the system, some of it will stick and they'll get a living out of it. Is that what you think? Yeah. And it's a sad indictment on society what these fuckers are doing to it because these lot, Bricktop and Hills and all that shower of shite around them, they've been doing this for years. But nobody's stood up to him. And it's only because social media is like it is now that people can have a say. Nobody's going to budge these. It's only fans that can budge these cretins. <coughs> Punsers! So that's how well, I feel about it. You mentioned something very important there, and it's basically um, social media. We live in a world where social media has allowed these people to perform on a stage like we've never fucking seen before. Yeah, and we're getting shitty as pantos ever from these people. The the shows are that bad now. The UK shows that are available on box right? Anybody who's anybody, go and look at the UK shows and go and look at the right hand side on the event. When you click on box right, your favorite fighter, click on ev event. All them on the right hand side, losing record. All them on the left, winning record. How are these 50-50s? They're not, are they? No. They're not 50-50s. Padding, padding for people's records, bullshit for people to buy, and money for hills and brick tops fucking wallet. Yeah, we know what's going on, don't we, mate? As long as we know, Jerry, that's all that matters, but it's up to them to have a look in the mirror the promoters and the TV people and the people who are signing off on these fights, surely they must have quality control. These people at some stage have got to turn around and say, right, enough is enough here. This is boxing, right? It's not gimmick shit. It's not misfits. It's not white collar. It's not UFC. It's boxing. So let's have Anthony Joshua in with some credible opponents. Frank Sanchez, 24 and 0, 17 knockouts or whatever. Jared Anderson, let's have him on scene. Dubois, let's have him on scene. Let's get some of these type of guys in with Joshua. We don't want to see any of these deadbeats who've just put a pair of gloves on recently fighting. It's shocking behaviour. I agree. Okay, well, listen. Thanks for coming on, Jerry. You're a very good guest. Oh. I look forward to having you on next week. Have it a bit more regular, at least once a week, if that's all right with you, Jerry. I'd be honoured. Thank you very much. Well, you just got to remind me you've got my number. Okie doke. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you have a great evening, Jerry. You too, mate. Take it easy. Take care and God bless. All right. Cheers, Ross. Take it easy, mate. Bye bye. Happy New Year, Jerry. You too, mate. Happy New Year. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. Peace out.